Well, good afternoon. It is Monday, July the 3rd, and it is afternoon. I just got busy this morning and uh, just ran out of time to read my Bible and to record this video. We're going to go straight into the King James Bible, the book of Acts, chapter 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy saddles, sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they said, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door, and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him. And having made Blastus, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a day set, a set day, Herod, arraigned in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms, and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem, where they had fulfilled their ministry, 
and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. There's some names that, although they sound familiar, I've never heard them termed that way. John, whose surname was Mark, for starters. I'll have to look that up. James, the son of John, the brother, the brother of John. Uh, yeah, I have to look that up. But what kind of made me smile a bit was in verse 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. I mean, Peter was sleeping in between two guards, and he just gave him a whack and rose him up. <laughs> it woke him up. You can imagine, couldn't you? You know, it's it's like... You would think that there would be some sort of heavenly presence and you would, you know, come out of your slumber and open your eyes and there's an angel of the Lord and the brilliance and the light. But no, he just comes in and says, hey, wake up. <laughs> it's just, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. But not to be mocked. It is a serious situation. God did send an angel to free him from the prison. Because his time had not yet come. It's, <laughs> you know, we often wonder why do some people die early? Why do some people die late and everything else? And why do some people get sick? Why do some people have almost, you know, unblemished lives? And <sighs> it's God's will. It's not for us to question, but it's for us to be obedient and to listen to what he's telling us. Now, if you get a slap in the face and you're told to wake up, I'm pretty sure you're going to start paying attention. Uh, I had a situation last night. And... I'm pretty sure I wasn't sleeping, although I was sleepy. But I was kind of curled up on my side and there was something pressing down on me. And I couldn't move, I couldn't move. It was a struggle. I couldn't extend my feet, I couldn't stretch out, I couldn't lift up my arms, I just couldn't move. So I'm not too sure if it was a dream or not. But I've had that before and I've heard people say about um, lying in bed, I felt as though there was a great weight on my chest, just, just literally pushing me down. And it's disturbing, or it used to be. But I immediately prayed and rebuked Satan and his demons. And that whole feeling, that feeling that I used to have when that happened to me, I just had a peace and a calmness and went back to sleep. There is a spiritual world that interacts with ours and we can't see it. We can sometimes feel it, I guess, when they want to. Peter certainly felt the slap on the face to wake up. This is from a spiritual being, so they can interact in a physical way with us. Demons and Satan are fallen angels, so their makeup and their capabilities are probably on par with each other. But of course, angels have the power of God behind them and Jesus Christ. Satan doesn't have that. He doesn't call upon that. So there are things that can happen to us, good and bad. But we do have the protection of Jesus Christ. And whether it's something that you know, is an experience like I had, or whether it's just, you know, the temptations become too great, or the world is getting you down and you just have anger building up like a volcano inside you, you can evoke the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of calmness and peace and comfort, and he's our helper. 
So that's exactly what you need on those occasions. I can testify that I used to be a very, very angry young man. I would be angry all the time. Anger was my worst enemy. And I know what it's like to submit to it. It, it overwhelms you. It dictates how you think, it dictates how you react, it, it affects relationships beyond belief, irreparably. And if anything, that, that can be one of the most damaging things in your life, to hurt the people you love. To hurt them to a point where they can't forgive you anymore. They won't forgive you. They're scared of you. That's not a good place to be. But there is a spiritual world that can free us from that. And it is the world of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. I don't know why all this came out. I guess this interaction between the angel and Peter. A little bit of a departure from scripture. I'm certainly not talking about Herod, but look where Herod delivered a speech. And everyone said, truly, these are words of a God and not a man. And he took it. He said, you know, whoa, they're thinking of me as a God. Well, bang. God smote him and put him in his place. Now, people say... People say these things only happened in the Old Testament, but this is the book of Acts. God is God. He doesn't change. Look up Korah's revenge. Look what happened to Aaron's sons. Look what happened to Herod. Look what happened to many other kings that didn't walk and offended and were abomination to God. Yes, God can eke out judgment even today. He is an awesome God. He is an awesome power. And he is not to be underestimated. A little bit heavy, I'm sorry. <laughs> A little bit heavy, but, if, you know, when things are on your heart and... Holy Spirit puts it there, it just it comes out that way. But we must realize that God is God. God is the same God that he was in the Old Testament, that he is in the New Testament, that he is 2,000 years later today. He is the same God. He is unchanging. And that's good. Because if you're a changing God, if you're a changing person, well, you never know how you stand. You know, if, if your best friend was constantly changing his mind and, you know, one day he likes going bowling and then another day he hates bowling and one day he likes going kayaking and the next day he hates going kayaking and you just don't know what to ask him and what to say because, you know, you don't want to offend him or get him angry or something like that because he keeps changing his mind. Well, God's not like that. God is consistent. He is unchanging. And we can bank on that. We can bank our soul on that. That he is unchanging. But you must know who it is you're dealing with. And the only way you can know is by reading his word. Now I'm only reading the New Testament. The Old Testament really tells you about God the Father. It also introduces Jesus, by the way. But if you want to know about God the Father in greater depth, you've got to get your head into the, new, to, into the Old Testament. And I mean, start at Genesis. A lot of people might say, well, you know, it, it might be good to, um, you know, get into Psalms or, or, you know, Proverbs or something like that. I, I would disagree with that. I would get into Genesis. 
I would go right the way through. Right the way through. And yes, reading the genealogies might seem pointless and boring and monotonous, but I tell you what, there is a purpose behind it. It helps you to get in the mindset. It helps you to understand the time span, the relationships, and everything else. It is a valuable tool. God put it there, so he wants us to know. He also put it there so we can establish timelines. That's for another day. Oh man, I've gone to 15, over 15, nearly 16 minutes now. Have a great day. Remember, this is a day the Lord has made, whether it's bright sunshine, thunder and storms or raining, whether it's humid or cool or hot, it is a day the Lord has made and he knows what he's doing because he loves you and I love you too. Thank you very much for listening. Speak to you tomorrow. Bye for now.